Back to the question of whether or not we were banned. Well, there's something going on. And uh, I talked to a woman you may be aware of, Chantelle Baker, who is a young, relatively inexperienced citizen journalist whose live streams of the protest at Parliament got more coverage than any mainstream media organisation, the platform included, than anyone else. And yes, sometimes Chantelle jumps the shark, sometimes she gets it wrong. But I had her on the programme a while back and she struck me as an enthusiastic, sometimes deluded, but genuine person without malice in her heart and a firm believer in some of the things that I thought she was wrong in believing it. But a uh, uh, fair dues, I couldn't find an evil conspiracy theorist in Chantelle Baker. Uh, Chantelle Baker came to me recently and said, and I had said to her, you should look at certain things. And she went away and she looked at them um, and she set up a new organisation. She got taken down off Facebook. She set up a new opera, uh, outfit called Operation People and they've been doing some digging. And I've been having uh, producer Ben uh, Espina look at that digging and it's uncovered some interesting stuff. So, Ben, firstly, the documents we're talking about here are official documents released under the Official Information Act to Operation People. They are indeed, yes. Yep. They're a uh, official uh, OIA request asking for all communication between any member of the Disinformation Assessment and Response Team and NetSafe during the period of August 22, 2022 to September 2022. Okay, so for people who don't know, DART, Disinformation Assessment and Response Team, is about three people who were there to look at, well, I don't know, what, what, what do you think their job was from reading these papers? Well, it seems to me, I mean, this is a pretty extensive document and it mostly details emails between government officials um, geared towards the removal of certain people from Facebook using their security guidelines, particularly Chantal Baker. There seemed to be a real focus on getting her off. Um, All right. On the grounds that what? She'd committed a crime? Well, that's the thing. There isn't really too much evidence in there of any real instance of disinformation. They kind of just go back and forth about, quote, banned actors uh, smurfing their way back on Facebook. Uh, one of them notes an opportunity to see if we can use the newly created code of practice to nudge them along, perhaps in the way one uses a rolled up newspaper to nudge a wayward canine along. So, so who some wrote of the that? that they were talking like, about, they're talking about Chantel Baker in that context. They are. And who's that? That correspondence between? M most of the correspondence in the OAA are between DART's senior advisor Daniel Domine and NetSafe CEO Brent Carey, who I think was new to the role at the time. And NetSafe is a kind of quasi government organisation that Net supposedly NetSafe makes is, people be nice on, on yeah, the internet. NetSafe is also a government funded uh, agency that focuses on online security. Um, so most of this co uh, the, the correspondence is between those two actors. So they were literally looking for ways that. Chantel Baker might have breached the code of conduct for Facebook and they were going to dob her in. Basically, yeah. A lot of the um, correspondence is also discussing how she's come up under a new Facebook group, which was, what did you say it was called? Uh, something People? Operation, Operation People. Operation People. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's basically two government agencies, one of which is alerting the other that this one person has come back on another group, on another Facebook. And it's basically, how name. can we get this person? Yeah, how can we deplatform this person? Are you person? aware of this? She's come back under this name. Oh, yeah, we'll get onto it sort of thing. How would you describe the tenor of the conversation between these group, these people? Uh, the, the language was, was, was somewhat disturbing, I thought. Um, the whole rolled up newspaper smacking a dog on the head sort of thing was a bit interesting. Um, and particularly not not particularly formal. I found the fact that they were the two government agencies just discussing one person quite a lot was interesting. Mm. They also got into and there was a report in there about voices for freedom, right? Yeah, so that's kind of the second half of the report, and that's where the platform comes into it. Mm. Um, so there was a, uh, a detailed report into the content and operations of Voices for Freedom, the Voices of Freedom Content Analysis Report, which was provided to the Ministry of Health by DART. Uh, it was a network analysis, and it uh, was represented in the form of a graph detailing all of VFF's links to, quote, disinformation, uh, of which the platform is listed as one. 
So we're listed as one of their top part of their disinformation network. Links to disinformation, yeah. Listed among seven other actors under the subheading most common New Zealand disinformation links with VFF, including Guy Hatchett, The Daily Telegraph, Cameron Slater's blog, and something called The Coronavirus Plushie, which yeah. I've never heard no, of. No, that's just some troll. I'm a little bit insulted that they've put us in the same category. Okay, now I was going to honest. ask you, Ben. Um, why are we lumped in with them? Does the report explain why? Well, there's absolutely no uh, allusion to any evidence of disinformation promote provided by us. Um, it's just simply a selection of different groups which presumably they view as being purveyors of disinformation uh, and we, which we're lumped into. Um, and the title that they've given us is an alternative media platform created by Sean Plunkett. And oh, that's so pretty much all it says. You get a shout out, yeah. Well, we're not. We're a new media organisation. Alternate has uh, values to it. Um, and I look, it might be, Ben, that because we occasionally interview people from VFF and we give the other side of the story that we become disinformation well, purveyors. Yeah, so the question remains whether the accusation here is that the platform itself is guilty of spreading health-related disinformation... <laughs> Uh, or whether we're simply complicit in the spreading of said disinformation for having spoken to VFF representatives on our shows. And further, really, whether DART can actually justify implying that the platform is in the same category as NZDSOS and Coronavirus Plushie. Um, but it's tough to get answers out of them because they don't exist anymore because they kind of just dissolved from the inside once they'd finished spying on Chantal Baker, it seems. OK. Um, being on a personal... You, you, I... We have a meeting every day, an editorial meeting, say, what are we going to have on the show on tomorrow or this week? You have to pick up the phone and do the, do the bloody legwork. Um, and it would seem to me it's got easier for you to line people up. But occasionally you do hit, particularly in government departments, people who are... Just not interested. And do you think a report like this being circulated... Uh, makes it easier or harder for us to do our job. Well, I think it's definitely the influence of the Disinformation Project, who are one of the first groups that would openly never talk to us. And I think it's uh, concerning that they seem to be getting in the air of government agencies and essentially selecting mm. which media that they talk to. I mean, um, having something like this being put on a, on a list like this um, to the more acquiescing government agencies certainly doesn't help. Uh, many of you seem to like Ben's pleasant voice. That he's easy on the air. Well, he also had a tale to tell. Um, and as he said, the platform wrongly, erroneously, perhaps def in a defamatory way, have been described as spreaders of disinformation. But really, the correspondence, particularly between Netflix and Dart, we now understand run by an ex-cop called Daniel Domine. Uh, it seemed uh, from this correspondence that one of their main focuses was the social media takedown of Chantelle Baker and her new group, group Operation People, which seems to be a citizen journalist operation. Um, well, as I said, the excellent research on this, the OIA request, uh, were conducted by Operation People and Chantelle kindly made them available to the platform and she joins us now. Chantelle, nice to have you back on the platform. Welcome. Oh, nice to be here, Sean. Thank you for having me. All right. So, you know, we had had a conversation, you know, uh, off air about maybe things to look at in the way the government was responding to COVID and particularly the disinformation hysteria that was around. You make some uh, really good official information at request. Were you surprised at what came back at you? Uh, I don't know if surprise is the right word. I mean, I think I was definitely concerned at the language that they were using, but I'm not surprised that they have been following and tracking people, and I'm not surprised at all that they've been targeting our page, because it's something that I was saying for a very long time was happening. Weird videos were getting flagged that should never have been flagged, that didn't break community guidelines, and it seemed I had videos taken down where the only person that was in it was a TV news reporter who was spelling disinformation themselves about a doctor here in Kaipoi. So there was just weird videos getting taken down that didn't break guidelines. So I'm not surprised the government had a hand in trying to remove my page and ultimately trying to remove Operation People as well. Okay, so they took down your original page, which was what, just your personal page? Yeah, my Chantal Baker page, which had around 100,000 people. And that did get taken down for a breach of community standards, which was what? So the last one that that page got that they said broke standards was 
a man I know called Rob who was in a wheelchair and I said, these are the protesters that I met. They were actually good, kind people and I will defend them. And I posted a few more things than that, but it was, I didn't say anything about Jab. I just said that these were actually decent human beings. Um, and that was the last one that I put up before they said it broke guidelines and took the page. And you really don't have any way of having a conversation with Facebook over that, do you? No, you can't get hold of Facebook, um, but we are trying to get the communications, all of the communications between um, Facebook and my page and any communication that was had with the government or NetSafe or any of those organisations. Okay. So we'll but see if we can get hold of it. It's clear from these documents, you're, you then moved to Operation People, that you were being specifically and personally targeted by this ex-cop, yep. Daniel Domine, their little bloodhound, um, disinformation bloodhound. Uh, my problem with that, Chantelle, is that you haven't broken, as I, far as I'm aware, any laws of New Zealand, right? Yeah. You ever been arrested? Absolutely not. No, nope, never. And I didn't camp at Parliament either. So the only place that I was at one point was a legal area that we were allowed to park in in a private car park. Okay. Have, how, many, how many speeding fines you got, Chantelle? 